Hi, in this video, I'm going to measure the cylinder head temperature and the engine temperature on my 2006 BMW R1200 GS Adventure to try and figure out what it means. So the idea is I'm going to plug in my GS911 scan tool. I'm going to start the bike and run it at idle until I reach operating temperature or around 70 degrees Celsius or between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. I'll let you know. Then I'm going to measure the cylinder head temperatures and maybe the exhaust uh, header temperatures with the infrared thermometer. I'm also going to check what the GS911 reads and I'm going to look at the graph to see what it tells me about uh, the way in which the cylinder heads heat up and whether the two sides, the two cylinders are the same temperature. Now I am not pretending to be an expert on any of this but I try to read online um, about cylinder head temperatures versus engine oil temperature and I couldn't find much information especially on the BMW and also what it means if there's a dif difference, in, difference in temperature between the two sides. So we're going to dig into that um, but like I said I'm not an expert so if you have useful information on the topic or if I get something completely wrong please comment below I'd love to learn from you and let the other viewers also learn um, from all you experts out there. Part of the reason why this is interesting is a lot of people worry about air-cooled engines especially in the heat. Now currently it's between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius or 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit so it is quite hot you'll see me sweating more and more in this video. Um, so let's quickly take a scan of the temperature with the thermometer so I'll quickly look at the header there and I see that's 41 degrees Celsius let's take the cylinder head in the shade it's 40 degrees Celsius and that's in the shade so you can see it's already quite hot if I look there on the alternator cover that's 33 so it's a bit cooler there in the shade um, let's take the plastic on the tank that's 52 54 degrees Celsius already so it's quite hot and the engine has not been started yet so we're going to plug in the scan tool now the GS911 um, we're going to activate it in device to device mode on my phone and we'll start scanning and then start the engine okay so I've plugged in the GS911 scan tool Press the button for device to device mode so that green light on the right hand side will come on. Flight recorder. So now we need to choose what we want to log. So I'm going to choose engine controller and all I want is the temperature. So you can see there's a whole lot of functions of stuff that you can scan um, but I'm just going to look for the temperature, the cylinder temperature. So I'm going to remove most of these tick, tick boxes. I'm going to make videos on all of these functions over the next couple of months so please let me know if there's anything you want to learn. I'm just going to leave air temperature, engine temperature, cylinder head 1, cylinder head 2 temperature and engine RPM. I'm going to remove all the other sensors. Start logging. You probably can't see it but it's just starting to heat up so it's at one bar and I think if it reaches the little triangle um, like four or five bars and um, that's normal. So the question is why would we want to know uh, whether there's a difference between the two cylinders so first of all it's interesting um, uh, and there's not much in information on it online so I just wanted to see for myself just for interest sake. But then I also would expect them to, to, to rise at the same rate because the same thing happens on either side. There's two spark plugs, they fire at the same, or uh, well, the timing should be the same. So if they work properly, the expectation is that they will rise smoothly and then rise at the same rate. So they'll reach the same temperatures when the bikes are operating temperature. The oil temperature will be cooler, say, say 80 degrees Celsius, and then the cylinders might be hotter and then the exhaust will be the hottest. So what could be some of the reasons for the two sides not sinking or, or being different temperatures? The first thing that comes to mind is that there's a misfiring cylinder so if, or misfiring spark plug. So 
if the coil pack for instance is, is faulty on one of the spark plugs or both on the one side then the piston won't fire and it won't get as hot so it'll be cooler um, if the spark plug maybe is damaged or the, 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 the gap is not right then um, it could be cooler on that side if the one cylinder is significantly hotter than the other one it could indicate that um, it's running lean so then it'll run hotter so the one side could run leaner so there is maybe a faulty oxygen sensor or something um, I'll make videos on all of that as I learn because I I'm still learning and the other reason for one cylinder being much hotter than the other could be um, that the exhaust valves don't close properly so the gap might be too tight now I set the clearance already so I'm expecting them to be um, closing properly and the valve shouldn't be a problem I've replaced the spark plugs they shouldn't be a problem so the coil packs I don't know that's what we'll see um, and then running lean we also don't know but uh, we'll have a look in a moment let's check the temperature now so I'm going to look at the oil temperature or the so you, uh, you probably can't see the gauge there but it's uh, three bars just quickly before I shut it off, I'm going to take the thermometer reading again on the heads. So, left side 70 degrees, right side 68 degrees. So we can compare that with the GS911 scan tool in a second. Let's shut off the engine. Stop logging values. It will automatically stop when you shut off the ignition. Every time you cycle the ignition, it starts a new log. So you can go riding and it'll um, log it. And every time you shut off, it'll save it, a CSV file. If you switch it on again, it'll start logging again automatically and create a new CSV file. So for every cycle of the ignition. So let's go and look at the data and then do a quick conclusion. So I downloaded the data from the GS911 scan tool. Um, I, I haven't found a way yet to view the li live graph, so um, I'll, I'll, as I figure it out, I'll make videos on it. Um, or if anyone else knows, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I exported the CSV file and put it in Google Sheets and I drew this um, graph that you can see on the screen now. So it starts at 60 there. I wasn't uh, sure whether it's logging because I couldn't see the live data on my phone. Um, and uh, anyways it was so every time you switch off the ignition it creates a new file so that's why this one starts at 60. anyways as i'm learning i'll i'll uh, share with you um, how this stuff works so let's look at the data so this is a cylinder uh, i'm not sure whether cylinder one is right or left um, but anyway cylinder one was one and a half degrees hotter than uh, cylinder head two at 60 degrees Celsius so it's not a lot that's two and a half or 2.6 um, percent so I'm not too worried about that it seems like they're running fine it could be maybe a bit leaner um, on the right hand side or something causing it and um, there was no airflow really so it couldn't have been that but anyways slightly hotter and then you can see they at 117 degrees Celsius so that's pretty much operating temperature and they converge and they are the same temperature and then cylinder 2 uh, increases slightly above cylinder head one um, that's again one and a half degrees hotter on the on the cylinder head two side and that's only one percent one point two percent so it looks like they're much closer at operating temperature and it could be that the air fuel mixture then is adjusted by the by the engine or the ECU um, and that is why they they are running at the same temperature that's just um, how I understand one of the potential causes of um, a difference in cylinder temperature so if you have any thoughts on this I'd love to learn because I'm not an expert and and that's part of why I got this uh, GS911 scan tool is to learn how all the different sensors and the computers work on the bike because the more you understand um, the safer I feel in any case because if you understand it you can spot something that's going wrong and you can fix it or if it is wrong you can maybe know where to look uh, to get the bike sorted out and it'll make it more reliable in the long term if there's something clearly wrong uh, then you can sort it out anyway so that is uh, just uh, the cylinder temperatures one and final thought is if you compare this to the 
infrared uh, thermometer that I used. Um, this seems to be a lot more reliable. This is what the engine sensors measure. Obviously, they could be wrong, but it's unlikely that they would both be wrong by the same amount. Um, but the, the problem with the gun is you measure different spots and they are all different types of metal. They're in the shade. They're not in the shade. They are different distances from where the combustion happens. So the temperature is very unreliable and it's very difficult to measure it from side to side or compare side to side um, because you measure it in a very small area uh, on a specific uh, location on the bike. So that is why I like this scan tool. It's just um, the information is just more reliable. Thank you for watching. That's it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions on the R1200 GS Adventure or the GS911 scan tool. Um, and if I made a mistake in my reasoning somewhere, please let me know. I'd love to learn. See you next time.